Well, good morning, everybody. You can give me a wave, give me a wave. Those of you online, it's wonderful to see you. We're gonna get started here in just a moment. And so if anybody's new, well, first and foremost, my name is Jason. I'm lead pastor here. It's good to see you. Those of you, again, who are joining us online, it is absolutely fantastic to see you today. And if you're online, you can sing with your whole heart and your whole voice. Uh, if you're here and again and you're new, uh, we can sing with our hearts. We can lift our hands. We can fully engage. We just can't fully engage our vocal cords. Uh, if you can be in prayer, Ottawa Public Health is going to update their guidance. They should be updating it this week. And so if there's any adjustments or changes, uh, we'll let you know. And so, yeah, so hopefully we can begin to sing at least with our masks. Um, but who knows? So, and again, today we are going to continue our different series looking at the spiritual disciplines of faith, or spiritual gifts, I should say, sorry, of faith, of miracles, and the last one is of discernment. And these are really powerful gifts. All gifts are powerful, but these ones are great as well. And so Pastor Lori is going to be teaching today, so you're in for a real treat. And so I just open your heart, and in just a moment or so, then we are going to get launched and rolling. Also today, uh, for those of you who are at home or those of you who are here, it is Backpack Sunday. And what that simply means is that every single year, uh, we take an extra offering, which is $25 purchases a backpack and fills it with school supplies. And so again, if you're at home or you're here and you are in need this year, that you have a child who is going back to school, uh, we would love to help support you and give your child a backpack, but also Life Center as a food bank. And so for that food bank, we're gonna distribute backpacks to 250, 260 students. And it's another way that we can just come alongside of moms and dads and families and make a Jesus-sized difference, take one thing off their plate, because parents have a lot on their plates these days. And so it's just one thing that we can do. Service is about to start. Let's dive in. All right, church, feel free to stand um, and join us in worship. We. Oui. 
is on his throne Though mountains may tremble and sea billows roll I'll sing it is well with my soul My God is still in control My God is still in control So Father, we thank you that you are absolutely still in control, not only of our lives, but of this world. And so you may be seated just for a moment as we just practice a spiritual discipline together. And the discipline that we're practicing on this Sunday is the one of solitude. And solitude is the spiritual discipline of being apart to be alone with God. So it's being apart from others. Sometimes it's being apart from social media or distractions for the express purpose, though, of being alone with God. And for some of you, this is an easy practice. And for others of you, this is a very difficult one. We get this from the life of Jesus. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, it says, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed. And he went out to a desolate place. And there... He prayed. And so to practice this spiritual discipline of solitude just for a moment or for a few moments this morning, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to have you simply ask, and then I'm going to have you listen. And then we're going to pray together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 26. And while I do, as I said, whether you're at home or whether you're here, I just want you to ask, and then I want you to listen to what the Holy Spirit may speak to your heart. And so I'm going to read Galatians 5, 19 to 26, and in it, it's going to have all the works of the flesh, but it's also going to have all the work of the Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, I should say. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit this one question today. So again, whether you're a child, student at home, or whether you're here, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what is one Heart, one in one manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit that you need more of in your life. Ask Him to highlight that. Don't immediately think about, oh, I want to grow in this area. Ask God to highlight it as we read through it. So, once again, Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 26. I'm going to read it, and as I do, you ask God, what are you working on? What fruit do you want in my life? Listen, let Him reveal it, and then we're going to pray. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I've warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is. Holy Spirit, which one do you want to activate in my life, in our lives? The fruit of the Spirit is love, it's joy, it's peace, it's patience, it's kindness, it's goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, there is no limit. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And so if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So I'm going to be quiet for about 15 seconds. It's so a Holy Spirit. Which one are you working on in our lives? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control. Father, thank you today that as your kids, we can hear your voice. Thank you, Lord, that you are always faithful in, to grow us in all of these areas, but specifically the one that you've highlighted for each of us today. Father, would you help us put to work the things of the flesh that are hindering 
the actual moving of this gift, the growth of this gift that you have highlighted in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, I thank you for your unfailing love that whenever we fall short, you remain faithful. Yet I thank you that you don't lower the bar, that you keep calling us higher because as we live and demonstrate more of the spirit, of the fruit of the spirit, that this world is filled with more of the goodness of God, the presence of God, that we can see glimpses and more and more of heaven on earth. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as together we sing a prophetic song just about in this season, the Lord taking us our faith further uh, than maybe where we're comfortable. So let's sing this song called Oceans Together.
Father, we thank you for your, again, unfailing love, for your presence that surrounds us, that indwells within us, that spills out of us each and every day. Father, I recognize fully, we together recognize fully that this is a season where whether we wish to or not, each of us is being pushed outside of our comfort zones, Father, to trust you. Uh, with things perhaps that we have never had to fully trust you before. Um, whether those are our emotional things or whether they are relational things, whether they are literally financial things, whether they are um, the future, God, that is fully there but yet remains uncertain. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, that you can actually use this season for things that are good. God, that you didn't create it, but you can use it, Lord, for things that are good, that help us can be more reliant upon you, more humble, uh, more sensitive to you, Holy Spirit, that we don't just go through life um, mindlessly. Father, I, I thank you that even in this season, Lord, that even some who were just addicted to a pace of life that was going to destroy their soul, that there can be an arresting. And so, Father, take all of us, lead all of us in this season well, even as we are in a season, God, where our faith is being absolutely stretched. In your name we pray, in Jesus' name. And everyone in your heart said amen. Those of you at home, you can say amen. You can type it in the chat. We may be seated at absolutely. Well, once again, for those of you who are here at home, I want to welcome you. My name is Pastor Jason. I'm lead pastor here at Life Center. And if you are new, so whether you're joining us online for the first time or the first time in quite a while, uh, whether you're here and you're new, um, you can just go to connect.lifecenter.org on your smartphone or your computer or a tablet, or even you can do that at home. You can click on the links that are coming up in the chat, but you can go to connect.lifecenter.org. And we'd love to connect with you just to hear about what's bringing you, where you're at, how you doing? And we'd love to do that. As well, we want to take a moment and thank you for your continued generosity. Uh, you know, this season really puts to the test whether we trust that God, that we bring our first fruits, the first 10% of everything that God brings, that we give it as a gift back to God. And so, again, we don't receive offering together, but those of you online, we can begin to give generously at this moment, and we thank you for doing that. But if you're here, there are donation boxes on your way in and on your way out that you could drop off any checks or cash or give in that way. Everything else we can give online with e-transfers and all those amazing things. But we want to thank you for your continued faithfulness and generosity to honor God's word uh, in this season. It is so vital. Uh, we want to take a moment right now as a church and we want to pray for Lebanon and we want to pray in particular for Beirut in terms of what transpired there this week, just the devastation in regards to the accident and the explosion. And so let's take a moment again. Let's just bow our hearts and our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we as the church in Ottawa, we pray for the nation of Lebanon. We pray for the city of Beirut, God. Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones this week. Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would comfort them in this moment. Father, for homes and for businesses, for churches and for schools and for hospitals that all need to be rebuilt. Father, we pray. We absolutely pray, Lord, for a nation that was already in an economic crisis and experiencing a pandemic to have this on top of it. Father, must just feel like too much. And so, Lord, I pray that there would be actually a releasing of the church within Lebanon to band together and do what they can do. Father, Lord, I pray for an outpouring even from the global community. And so, Lord, we just pray. 
We pray for the nation and we pray for the people, God. And we just pray, Lord. We pray once again that there would be aid, that there could be a rebuilding of something that is better. But be with them in the midst of the rubble, in the midst of the brokenness, in the midst of the difficulty. And so, Father, we do. We pray for not only that, but we also pray for the rest of our service today. That you'd help us to be more like you in the midst of the complexities not that they're in competition, but in the mix of the complexities that we walk through within Canada and within Ottawa and the national capital region. In your name we pray. And I was going to say, and everybody said, but you can't say anything. But if you're at home, you can shout amen. If you're here, you can say it in your heart. Uh, once again, Ottawa Public Health is due to update their guidance. So we are believing God that they are going to begin to relax a little bit, that if we can have masks on, that we could actually say amen or we could sing gently. And so we're praying for those things that they would be released soon um, because there are some inconsistencies right now. You can go to a gym and work out and you can go to a restaurant and take your mask off and eat, but we can't say a word. But anyhow, we are going to honor, but we're working through all these inconsistencies. I know everybody's doing the absolute best they can and I have no criticism. I understand it, but they are going to update guidance and so we'll keep you informed on that. A few things I want to make mention before uh, Pastor Lori comes and preaches today. Number one is that officially today and for the next seven days, we are kicking off our annual backpack uh, for kids. Normally this Sunday, we'd have backpacks all across the front here and you'd come and you'd take them, but we can't do that. But we are still doing backpack giveaways. And so again, um, this year we are believing God to bless over 260 kids by giving their moms and dads uh, just a bit of help and a little bit of a head start. And so again, what it is, is a backpack Sunday, is it's a backpack that you purchase and then we fill it absolutely full of school supplies. Uh, we're gonna do it through our food bank. Everything is gonna be done in a sanitary way. Um, but we're going to be able to distribute, you know, backpacks. We've heard from, again, Ottawa Public Health, they don't, that they have no objections, providing we do this in a certain way, which we're going to comply with. And so the specifics are it's $25 purchases a backpack and absolutely fills it with school supplies. And so Lori and I are, this morning, we're down for eight backpacks. We're engaged wholeheartedly. Uh, you can give you know, uh, when you're leaving, you can drop a donation off. You can give online. If you just go to lifecenter.org slash backpack, all the information is there. So you can give that way. Or you can also text. It may be coming up. Is there, is there instructions that can come up behind me here? There, perfectly. If you can leave that up just for a second, that would be great. So uh, you can actually text $25 or any amount to 84321. Why is it 84321? I have no idea, but that's the number. So you can text 84321 and there's $25 or whatever amount you want to. Uh, so Lori and I did $200. And so we put $200 backpack and you can text uh, or you can do it online in just a very really simple way that you and I can make a Jesus-sized difference uh, in this time and in this season. So you can leave that screen up. Uh, don't go to the next one. Just leave that up for people. They're going to need that for a few more seconds. Uh, of course, you know that we have students on Friday night. We don't need screen support. Let's leave this one up. We have students on Friday night for junior highs and senior highs. For those of you who are in home campuses, it's amazing. If you're digging into life groups, that's also spectacular. But thank you so much for your ongoing generosity, in particular to help 260 uh, moms and dads, especially their kids, just take a little bit of the burden off their shoulders as they go back to school. And also, if you know anybody who here is in Life Center who we could support and they need a backpack, um, then you can just email us at hello at lifecenter.org and we will make sure to get in contact with them, Pastor Jeff will, and we'll make sure that they also get a backpack because it's not only what we're going to do to bless those without, we want to make sure that every parent of Life Center is absolutely blessed if they're in a space where things are tight and they need some assistance. Well, would you welcome Pastor Lori as she comes to talk about spiritual gifts, continuing our different series online or here in campus in person. Uh, let's welcome her as she comes. Thanks, Jay. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. We usually do one backpack per one kid. So we did eight this, this year. So I'm just believing maybe we're having four more kids coming into our family. Yes. Love it. My prayers are being answered. Just kidding. Just kidding, Jay. It's okay. Uh, so we're in our different series, and I hope you've been loving it as much as I have. I know God is sort of 
reawakening a new passion to talk about this, to teach about this, to help people discover the spiritual gifts that they've been given. And we are believing for a supernatural empowerment of these gifts in the lives of believers. So if you're here in the room, we're so excited that you're here. If you're joining us online, that same supernatural empowerment and anointing is available for you to grab hold of in whatever gifts the Holy Spirit has given you, and an awareness to come in those gifts so that you can operate in them in the fullness of all that God has prepared for you. And I am so excited about it. And it is no surprise that the Lord spoke to Jason to call this series different, because the reality is that every single one of the gifts is different. The reality is that we are in a very different season than we've ever been before in the history of our lifetimes. And now more than ever, there is so much difference being expressed in our life and in our culture. And when you look around at the world, how us as humans handle difference always brings about division. Because if there's different perspectives, then someone must be right. And if you don't see it the way that I see it, then you're wrong, I'm right. And division ensues. Pastor Jason gave this brilliant opening to his message last Sunday. And if you haven't seen the message last Sunday, I encourage you to go and watch it where he literally just shared all of these sort of differences and our human response to those differences is often, if you don't see it the way that I see it, I'm out. I don't want relationship with you. But the kingdom of God is completely different. In fact, God has supernaturally placed different gifts inside of each one of us for the sake of unity and empowerment and for us to come together in power. And that's only able to happen through the supernatural empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Because again, in our humanness, difference brings division. It happens in marriage. It happens in relationships. It happens in every facet of life. And so we need the Holy Spirit to help us see difference as something that makes us stronger, as something that brings us together. So as we talk about spiritual gifts, every week we're talking about different spiritual gifts. And even in that, we can feel the tensions of different spiritual gifts wanting to be in operation. But how is there room for all of these gifts to work together? Well, it takes us to be reliant on the Holy Spirit and reliant and interconnected with one another, valuing each and every one of the gifts together. So a spiritual gift is a God-given unique capacity imparted to each believer, every single one of us has them, for the purpose of releasing Holy Spirit-empowered ministry from that believer. So a couple of the things I just want to highlight that we've been talking about each and every week. Everyone is given a primary spiritual gift at the moment of salvation. So again, this is something, a gift that the Holy Spirit gives us that's empowered by him. It's not ours. We don't own it. We're called to steward it. It comes from God and we're called to steward it. Everybody has a sort of giftedness set, a mix of gifts that is our primary spiritual gift, that is a mix of acquired skills that we've learned over our lifetime, and natural abilities that just God has given you. And so together, this giftedness set gives us a unique expression in the body of Christ, and God wants to use this in our lives for powerful meaning and purpose. Now, there's a key one of the keys is identifying what spiritual gift you have, but there's a second part in that that we need a place and we're believing and we're praying about how do we create a church where we can practice and develop these spiritual gifts in our life. One of the keys in recognizing the spiritual gift that you have is there's a special ease that you have when you use this gift. Like the analogy we've been using every week that there's almost like a motorized version. You're on the riding lawnmower or using the snowblower where everybody else is using a shovel. So you feel this sense of empowerment as you use this gift. 
Now, in 1 Corinthians 12, this is kind of our key scripture, it says, now there are a variety of gifts. Another word for that is different. There's different gifts, but the same spirit. There are a variety of service, but the same Lord. There's a variety of activities, but the same God who empowers them all in everyone. Remember, all the differences comes back to the oneness in Christ. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit, Why? For the common good, for the good of everybody. So I'm going to skip down a few verses. And in verse 9, it says, To another, faith, a gift of faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by by one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. All kinds of different gifts in operation, working together as a body. So, We've learned about that there's three clusters of gifts. The love gifts, we talked about those the first week. The word gifts, we unpacked those the last few weeks. And now, today, we get to start the power gifts. Woo! Yes, the power gifts. These are the exciting gifts in the body of Christ that we get to see that begin to authenticate the reality of the unseen God. And so we're going to focus today on the power gifts of faith discernment, and miracles. Those are the gifts that we are going to unpack today. Now, in 1 Corinthians 12, the scripture that we just read, that where Paul unpacks all of the gifts, he is literally addressing the church in a very specific way for a very specific reason that we need to pay attention to today. Because what the Corinthian church was doing was the Corinthian church was elevating certain gifts, the power gifts, over all the other gifts. Now, we have a tendency to do this in church. We have a tendency to elevate certain gifts over other gifts. And what they were doing is they were actually making people who didn't operate in the power gifts feel like they were a lesser version or a lesser Christian, like they were less important. And so Paul was addressing this, and he was saying, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Every single gift is empowered by the Holy Spirit and is supernatural. So if you operate in the gift of helps, that is just as supernaturally empowered as if you operate in the gift of prophecy. They are equally supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit. We need every single one of them to work in operation together in order to accomplish what God has. The other temptation that we have with the power gifts is to reject them altogether. Because I know for some of you, you may have been hurt by people who have used the power gifts. Maybe someone with a sense of discernment has come and they have confronted you about something in your life. And maybe they've done it in a way that has been unloving and has been hurtful. And so in a sense, you sort of put this barrier up in this wall. I don't really want to participate with anything that has to do with prophecy, with discernment, with any of these things. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to see that. That has hurt me before. And so we sort of reject them all together. And so those are two things we want to be aware of as we lean into these gifts, that we do not elevate these gifts over any other gifts, or that we, if we've been hurt, that we're not rejecting them all together. And so prayerfully and with humility in our heart, we want to say, Lord, if we have in any way participated with someone who has used these gifts to hurt someone else in the body of Christ, Lord, would you forgive us? And if we have closed our heart towards any of these gifts because we've been hurt, Lord, would you heal us? And that's the posture that we want to enter into this conversation today. So the spiritual gift of faith, that's the one we're going to talk about first. The gift of faith refers to the unusual capacity of a person to recognize in a given situation that God intends to do something and to trust God for it until he brings it to pass. Okay, now this doesn't sound that special. I mean, aren't we all supposed to sort of do this as believers, like to see in a situation that God intends to do something and to trust him for it? Well, yes, but the spiritual gift of faith is the unusual capacity to be able to recognize this in any situation that the Holy Spirit allows you to do this. And so the the central thrust of this gift is a response in a challenge from God. All right, now every single one of us as believers, if you've given your life to Christ, you needed faith in order to do that. To receive Christ into your life, you needed to exercise faith. So faith is a part of every single one of our lives as believers. 
Absolutely. The Bible talks a lot about faith, and faith is actually one of the fruit of the Spirit. So it's the evidence of the Spirit of God within us. So every single one of us definitely has faith. But the spiritual gift of faith is something more than that. Now, it is an ability to specifically hear from God or to know by faith before you see something that something's going to happen or not going to happen and to believe God for it in the face of insurmountable odds, in the face of obstacles. You can see it, you can believe it, and you know it's going to happen. Now, one thing the spiritual gift of faith is not, and I want to clarify this, is It is not a sort of a name it and claim it sort of theology. It is not a positive confession. It is not a manifesting of what I want or desire or believe God wants to give me. We see this in the world. We see this a lot right now, this idea of I'm manifesting, I'm visualizing exactly what I believe God wants me to have. No, 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 no. That is not what the gift of faith is. You see, the gift of faith does not benefit the individual who has that gift. There's no personal benefit to it except that we get to be a part of the fullness of what God wants to accomplish on the earth. That's the only joy and the only benefit. It is for the benefit of the body of Christ, and I think that's really, really important. Now, in the scriptures, um, there's this story of Joshua and Caleb. And so, there, in the story, the children of Israel sent out 12 spies to go and spy the land that God had promised, the promised land that God had promised to them, okay? So, they sent them out. They were there for 40 days, and they were looking at this land. They were spying out every part of the land. And they came back, the 12 spies came back, and I want you to picture it, okay? They stood up before all the people, kind of like this, maybe. All the people were there, and the 12 spies came up, and they said, it is exactly as God has promised. There, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. There are grapes the size of a man's hands. It is amazing. It is plentiful. It is bountiful. It is everything God said, except it is occupied by these giants. And there is no way that we're going to be able to overtake this group of people who own this land. There's no way. It's not possible. And all the people get in an uproar. And they're like, why did you bring us here? I can't believe you did this to us. You should have just left us in Egypt. They were so upset. Caleb, okay? This is a man with a gift of faith. Listen to what he says. And so, so literally, he comes onto the scene in this picture. All the people are crying out, complaining. They're so upset. And it says, but Caleb, in Numbers 1330, but Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and occupy it, for we are able to overcome it. Now, Were they, in their own strength and power, able to overcome it? No. What the spies saw was accurate. But Caleb saw beyond the giants, beyond the obstacles, and believed the promise of God and was able to declare it in that moment. You see, someone with the gift of faith has an unwavering, hope-filled steadfastness in the face of, of obstacles. Now, Paul, over the course of his life and ministry, demonstrated this over and over again. He showed this in his life because he received this unusual and supernatural call and vision of what God wanted to do with his life. And he clung to that and lived that out in the face of many, many challenges and obstacles. And I can remember one day, Many, many, many years ago, in an incredibly profound supernatural encounter with God, where I felt like I went from just being an insignificant, average, I don't even know what the word is, just nothing really of a person, to after the encounter with God, having this internal knowing that God wanted to do something with my life. Now, I didn't know in that moment that God had empowered in me a supernatural gift of faith. I didn't know that, but I felt that there was something, there was something different. And from that day, there was an empowerment in my walk with him. So I get this. Now, if you have the spiritual gift of faith, this is what might happen to you. 
You have an unusual desire to accept God's promises at face value and to apply them to given situations until God fulfills them. Receiving what you believe to be a vision of some future work of God and trusting God for it until it comes to pass. The reoccurring experience in the midst of situations to sense that God is going to do something unusual even though most of the people around you don't have the same kind of assurance. An unusual desire to know God in his fullness and to go to him and him alone for solutions and problems. The thrill of knowing time and time again that God is real because he and he alone has specifically and in a very detailed way intervened on your behalf. An attitude that says not only can God do something, but he will do something. In fact, in many cases, you know that he has already done it. You have a deep knowing when a vision for, is from God and will come to pass and which other ones will not work. And so whenever I did a spiritual gift test, I often came out with um, encouragement, exhortation, um, sometimes leadership, sometimes on the test would be maybe down a couple prophecy or discernments, some other gifts. And so I, I never noticed the gift of faith coming up on a spiritual gifts test. And again, I have a feeling that is because the spiritual gift of faith that was in operation in my life, empowered by the Holy Spirit, was so natural for me and came with such an ease that I didn't even recognize that it was special. I just sort of thought that everybody thought this way and really didn't understand why other people didn't think this way, why other people couldn't just go to God and ask him what he wanted to do and trust him in whatever direction he said for their life. You see, faith is an edification gift and exhortation is an edification gift. So you can see how a lot of the gifts are interconnected and how it's really easy for us to miss exactly what it is that God has given us. Faith also, because it is so talked about in so many different ways, it's actually one of the gifts that's a little bit under the radar. We don't talk about it or teach about it that much. And so, again, this gift, like any of the gifts in our lives, I'm able to use it as the Holy Spirit enables, but only as the Holy Spirit enables. So it's not like in every single situation, I have an unwavering assurance that God is going to move, or I have a knowing of what God's going to do. It's only as the Holy Spirit allows and as the Holy Spirit enables in my life. And so that's the same for every single one of us. Now, again, with every gift, we're all called to use the gifts out of spiritual discipline if they're not gifts that God has supernaturally empowered in our lives. But there are some cautions. There are some cautions for people with a gift of faith. Because people with a gift of faith can actually be overwhelming to other people around them. People who need a little bit more time to get on board. Caleb showed up on the scene and he's like, guys, what are you talking about? God promised us we're going to take the land. Now, for someone with the gift of faith, what happens is we get the vision from God and we just start running. And as we start running, I, I want to go from behind the screen so badly. <laughs> oh, I just sprayed too. It's probably good that I stay here behind the screen. Okay. <laughs> they want to take off. They want to go up the mountain. And people with the gift of faith, what they do is they forget to look behind. They forget to look behind at those that may be tripped along the way and have fallen. They forget to look behind at those who are afraid and maybe need someone to come alongside them. And, and this is a perfect example of why all the gifts work in such beautiful synergy with each other. Because imagine someone with a gift of faith walking alongside someone with a gift of administration. Because someone with a gift of faith like me, I don't really care how we're going to do it. We're go I'm running and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not planning. I'm not, I don't really care what obstacles are in front. I know God's going to provide. And we go, but how beautiful if someone with a gift of administration says, okay, is that where we're going? Okay, this is what we need for the journey. We're going to pack this. We're going to prepare this. I mean, how beautiful. Then someone with a gift of mercy comes alongside and says, okay, those who are afraid, those who are broken, those who are abused, uh, are bruised, those who are in need of help, they come alongside and they say, you know what, I'm going to put my arm around you. We're going to go together. Those who fall and trip along the way, how beautiful is it that we get to all work together in operation? So those of you 
who have this gift, who have a tendency to just run ahead. I know someone actually, one time they were trying to encourage me, and, and they were like, you know, I see you as a bulldozer. And I was like, oh, that's, I'm not, um, that, I'm not sure if that's a real, a real compliment, but okay, thank you. And they're like, no, I mean that in the best way. I'm like, oh, okay. Definitely someone with a gift of faith can be called a bulldozer, okay? So you see what I'm saying? But we need each other to go and to take the mountain. Yes, that is a call. That's what God's called us to do. But we need each other to go so that everybody can make it to the promised land. People with a gift of faith can sometimes be restless, and they can run ahead of the Holy Spirit. So we all need such submission to the Holy Spirit as we operate in our gifts. All right. We're going to go on to the gift of discernment. All right, they don't have the clock up there today, so I think that just means, you know, when there's no price tag on something and you get it for free, I think that's pretty much what it means. I can take as long as I want today, so that's awesome. Um, The gift of discernment, the discerning of spirits refers to, I'm just kidding, guys, I actually have a clock on my iPad, so it's good. Don't worry. The gift of discernment, the discerning of spirits, refers to the ability given by God to perceive issues in terms of spirits spiritual truth, and to know the fundamental source of the issues, and to give judgment concerning those issues. This includes the recognition of spiritual forces operating in the issues. Do, 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 do. You know what I'm saying? This is this one is the one. Okay, we understand why this is in the power, uh, the power pact, and one of the power gifts. But also, this gift very, very specifically taps into the supernatural realm, the realm of the spirit. And I think it's important to identify that there is a very real realm of the spirit that we can't see in the natural realm. We're not privy to see. Now, some of you with the gift of discernment or the discerning of spirits, you are privy to see some things in the, in the supernatural realm. You're, you're able to recognize, see, you have a sense. Sometimes it's a vision. Sometimes it's a picture. Sometimes you actually can see it. And so this is a supernatural gift that gives you the ability to see into the spirit realm. Now, this is the purpose for this gift, and this is really important. It's a sensitivity to truth and its source, okay? So people who the Holy Spirit is empowered with this gift, it's about understanding truth and its source. It's actually a gift that's designed to protect the body of Christ. So that's really, really, really important. Now listen, we're all called to be discerning. We're called as believers to be discerning. So some of us will use this gift out of discipline, but others of you have been given a supernatural empowerment to walk in this. John Thompson describes it like this. He describes the use of this gift in a very, very practical way. And if you're taking notes today, you can take, you can write down, I want you to draw an arrow up, an arrow down, and an arrow side to side. So he calls this the up, side to side, and down. So some of you have an up way of discerning. What that means is that you know when the presence of God is in a room. You just have a sense. Sometimes you feel it in your body. You just know when the presence of God comes. When you're sitting in a worship service, when you're at home, when you walk into a space, when you're having a conversation with someone, you have this sensitivity to know that God is here. God's presence is here. God's spirit is moving. And you, you can feel it. You can see it. You can sense it. That's discernment. For some of you, it's a side-to-side way. So you just have this supernatural ability to know when flesh or sin is in operation. You know, for you, you might be having a conversation with someone, having coffee with someone, and they're telling you a story, and there's just something that you're like, there's something not right about what you're saying. There's something missing in this story. There's something that you can sense about what they're saying that, has either a work of the flesh or some sinful nature or the enemy is attacking them or the enemy is at play in their life and you just, you know it and you can sense it. And again, for some of you, you see it. Some of God gives you visions. God gives you the ability to see. There's lots of different ways that this feels or manifests. And for others of you, 
It's the downward version. And again, you have a sensitivity to sense evil, to sense when the enemy is at work, to sense when the devil is working or when evil, when an evil presence has walked into a room. And again, this can show up in lots of different ways. For some of you, you've had very real encounters with darkness. You've had very real encounters. Maybe it comes through a dream. Maybe it comes through a vision. Maybe you're just minding your own business one day and all of a sudden, you can see an evil, dark presence, and you don't know what it is, but you see it, and it's scary, and it's awful. Some of you see these things. God gives you an ability to see, and it is so important to remember in those moments that that is not you. That is the Holy Spirit in you, and you must ask him, why are you giving me the ability to see this or understand this? This gift must be in such close relationship with the Holy Spirit to understand why is God giving you eyes to see this? Why are you getting this sense? And what does God want you to do with it? Jesus used this gift. One day, he was telling his disciples about his coming death. And Peter, (laughs) his disciples, says, Lord, no, no, what are you talking about? You don't have to die. And Jesus remembers, I've heard this before somewhere, and he remembers a time in the wilderness when Satan appeared to him and said, you don't have to die. You don't have to do this. And he literally turned to Peter, okay? So he's talking to Peter, and he looks at Peter, and he says to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. You see, Peter was talking, but Satan was working through him to tempt Jesus. Later, after Peter denies Jesus and he's fully restored, the Holy Spirit gives Peter this very same gift of discernment. And so later in Acts, we see Peter standing before Ananias, and he says to him, why has Satan so filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? The crazy thing about this story is Ananias was a believer, Every one of us can be used by the enemy to thwart the plan of God. And we need people with a spirit, with a gift of discernment to discern these things, to call these things out. Discernment is about the source. Now, the strange thing and the scary thing, and listen, we only know in part about these things. None of us has a full and complete revelation of the supernatural realm. So we have to have great humility as we operate in this, but spiritual gifts from our side and from the other side can look similar because we know that the devil can portray himself as an angel of light. And so if Satan can get in and begin to thwart God's plans by even in what seems like it's good, someone with a sensitivity and a gift of discernment can discern the source of what is happening. And so it's so important that we ask God, why have you shown me this and what do you want me to do? And I promise you, most of the time, it is to pray. You see, God uses this gift to the church to protect the church from anything that is not from God. And so people who are given this gift are called to test the spirits and to attest to the truth that is found in the word of God. 1 John 4, 1 says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So those of you who have this gift, it may look like this. You have a keen sense for recognizing inconsistencies. The tendency is always to be figuring out what's wrong with a situation and how can it be improved. You have the ability to categorize and think in logical ways. You have a good grasp of scriptural truth in general. And I want to just hone on this for a minute. That's a key. If you have a gift of discernment, you need a strong and firm grasp on the word of God. And if you don't anchor yourself, if you don't have a firm grasp on truth, truth that comes from the word of God, then actually don't like, like, um, let the gift lie dormant for a little bit. Get grounded and anchored in the word of God and then slowly begin to practice the gift because you're going to make a mess if you don't know the word of God. 
You have a deep underlying sense of conviction, which will not allow you to rest when you know people are, are being given half-truth, misapplied truth, or false teaching and are asked to act upon it. An unusual sensitivity or an intuitive grasp of people and situations. Many people have that sense. You often and usually quickly notice when public speakers give wrong interpretations or misapply the scriptures. On some occasions, you will get a glimpse of the behind the scenes supernatural reality in a situation, either by mental picture or in reality. You see physical symptoms that lead you to know that something is wrong. And so you may, again, see a vision, see something externally, have a sense of something. Now, just by reading that list of symptoms, it's actually a little bit difficult to dist distinguish whether you just have a critical spirit because discernment can actually manifest very, very critically or if you have a gift of discernment. And so it's why all the gifts were called to walk in the fullness of love. And if we have love in the gifts, then it won't come from a critical spirit. And so that's really, really important as we're operating in this gift. We need to have a positive critical view as we are discerning so that we can actually say, what does God want to do? What is God doing? And we can focus on that as the motive for why we're uh, bringing truth as opposed to what's wrong with this and calling out the negative. And so for you, those of you with this gift, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. You need to get on your knees. You need to pray and you need to ask God, God, why have you shown me this? Why have you given this to me? And what do you want me to do with it? And most of the time, most of the time, it's going to be to pray. All right, the last one we're going to unpack today, and I'm going to do this one real fast, is miracles or power. So the working of powers or the gift of miracles refers to the releasing of God's supernatural power so that the miraculous intervention of God is perceived and God receives recognition for that supernatural intervention. And so this is all about the releasing of God's power to give authenticity to the gospel, authenticity to the message of Jesus. And so the gift of miracles is when God chooses to use a person to alter the course of nature. The miracles often have an instantaneous result. So it refers to things like casting out of demons, calming the storm. You see it in environmental ways, raising people from the dead. But it is not the same thing as healing. Healing is another gift that we're going to unpack in a few weeks. People who work in freedom ministry or deliverance ministry often use this gift. And these miracles authenticate the gospel when used in public. And there's a lot of controversy, even in the church at large, as to whether the gift of miracles is still necessary today. Because in, script, in Bible times, it was used to authenticate the, me the message of the gospel and to establish the early church. Well, the church is established, so do we still need this gift? And it is one that we don't see as often, but it is still absolutely necessary. And I believe, I believe with all my heart that the gift of miracles is lying dormant in many believers and that there is going to be a fresh release of this gift in the body of Christ. So if you have this gift, it might look like this. God will put you in positions which you must see the power of God demonstrated in order to vindicate God's character. You have an ability or sensitivity to discern what God wants to do in a given situation. You have a willingness to risk your reputation and trust God in unusual situations. You have a deep trust and faith in God. You have an ability to see spiritual realities of a situation and discern the power encounter that is happening. And so these are some of the ways that this gift manifests. Now, one of the things that's so important to mention is that as believers, every single one of us has the authority to step into a situation when the enemy is coming. I mean, the scriptures say, resist the devil and he will flee, and to take authority of the works of darkness over our life. So if you're having, uh, you know, something coming into a dream, something happening to someone in your family, you, as a believer, can say, in the name of Jesus, I command that darkness to leave in Jesus' name. Every single one of us has the authority to stand in that. But for some of you, you find yourself over and over and over again being presented with situations where people need to get free, and they just happen to come to you. And you, you're not asking for it. You're not looking for it. They just seem to come to you. And, and God uses you to help people get free.
And that's exactly how this gift works. I know Pastor Sandra Morin, who comes to our church, that's exactly her story. She says to me all the time, I never wanted this. I never asked for this. But people just randomly just keep coming to me over and over and over again and saying, I need to get free. And God uses her powerfully in this gift. Remember, the power gifts are not more supernatural than any of the other gifts. Every single one of the gifts requires the supernatural empowerment of the Holy Spirit in order for us to operate in them. And so, if you believe that you might have one of the power gifts that we talked about today, faith, discernment, or miracles, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand. Now, If you have not been here for the last few weeks, or even online, if you have not heard all of the messages that we have done, and you have missed the opportunity to be prayed over in the gift that you believe that you have, or if you want God to use you in one of these gifts, and you want to ask the Holy Spirit to empower this gift in your life, if you want faith, discernment, miracles, leadership, pastor, evangelism, exhortation, teaching, apostleship, mercy, giving, helps, or serving. Any of the gifts that we've talked about in the past messages that we've done so far. I'm going to invite you to stand. And we, and if you're online, I'm going to invite you to stand at home. And we're just going to pray a special prayer of release over your life in any one of those gifts. And just believe God for a supernatural releasing of these gifts in operation in the body of Christ. So right now, If you believe any of those gifts that I mentioned today, if you want prayer today and you just want a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, just stand. God knows. The Holy Spirit knows what's on your heart. He knows what you're standing for, and he knows what he wants to give you. And so we're just going to pray. God, thank you so much for all the gifts. Thank you that they are different because they require us to be reliant on one another. And we thank you, Father God, that you want to use us, your body, to accomplish your work on the earth. And so, God, as my friends here, as the body of Christ, my sisters and my brothers are standing in faith right now, believing. We pray for a fresh release of the supernatural gifts of your Holy Spirit to fall fresh on them in whatever gift that you have chosen and the measure you have chosen it in the name of Jesus. The gifts of faith, the gifts of discernment, of miracles. We pray for the gifts of leadership, pastoring, evangelism. We pray for exhortation and teaching and apostleship and mercy and giving and helps and serving. God, would you release a fresh anointing and a fresh infilling of your spirit into every single one of us, an activation of those gifts so that we can walk in the fullness of the purpose that you have called us to. We thank you, Father God, that these gifts belong to you. They're yours, and you call us to steward them. Help us to be completely submitted to what it is that you choose that we would have. Help us to be content in what you have given us and to walk out and to be good and wise stewards of everything that you have given us. And help us to walk interdependently as the body of Christ, one with another, not comparing, not looking down, but God walking shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, in need of one another to accomplish all that you have set before us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor Jason. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for diving in. Those of you who have been joining us at home, it's been amazing to have church again this week. So uh, you can dig into resources we have available to go deeper here. Also join us for devotionals at 9 a.m. on whether it's Facebook or Instagram. So you have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful week.